This video demonstrates the way we can analyze glucose in a solution by using a pair of redox reactions. To begin, we have aliquoted a known volume of our glucose solution into a flask. To this, we will add reagents for the redox reaction to proceed and then follow this up with a titration. As you will be timing multiple reactions in this lab, you may wish to prepare each reaction mixture in advance in a small beaker. This way you can add them all at once and simplify your timing. The reaction mixture is composed of triiodide as well as sodium hydroxide. The triiodide needs to be added quantitatively, whereas the sodium hydroxide can be added in rough quantities using a graduated cylinder. The two reagents may be mixed prior to addition to the glucose solution without any detrimental effects. If you have prepared your reagents in a beaker as I have shown, you will need to quantitatively transfer the solution. Therefore, you will need to rinse out your beaker and transfer the remaining reagents into the flask. You will now let the reaction proceed for approximately 5 minutes. In this time, prepare your hydrochloric acid to be able to quench the reaction when the timing is done. The amount of hydrochloric acid does not need to be measured with great accuracy. Using a graduated cylinder is acceptable. For your first titration, you may wish to do a rough titration to get an approximate endpoint. If you are doing this, you will want to add the starch indicator immediately at the beginning of your titration. For the accurate titrations that you will use for your quantification, you will want to add the starch indicator significantly later. The reason for this is that starch can permanently bind to the triiodide molecule and may lead to difficulties in visualizing the end point. As you will see through this titration, the initial color of the solution is a golden yellow. As you proceed through the titration, it will become lighter and lighter to an almost pale yellow color. When you've achieved the pale yellow color, it's time to add the starch indicator. The indicator will greatly change the color of the solution, making the visualization of the endpoint much easier. As you can see, the addition of starch turns the solution to an almost black-blue color. This color will disappear and become completely colorless when you reach your endpoint. As with all titrations, it is important to swirl the flask continuously to ensure that the reaction is proceeding. In addition, rinse down the walls of the flask on occasion to make sure that no reagent or titrant is clinging to the walls. This analysis is unique in the fact that we are using two reactions to quantify the amount of glucose in solution. The first reaction is between glucose and triiodide. Glucose is a reducing sugar and will lead to the reduction of triiodide. We have added an excess of triiodide to the solution. Therefore, when all the glucose is exhausted in the reaction, excess triiodide will remain. This triiodide is then quantified by the titration with thiosulfate. As we know the concentrations of thiosulfate and triiodide, we can determine how much triiodide was used in the reaction with glucose and determine the amount of glucose as a result. If you have not added your starch indicator too soon, it should be very easy to see a clear transition to a colorless solution for the endpoint of this titration. Ideally, you should be able to achieve this with a single drop of titrant.